In this video net interview, I'm talking with Keith Wimes, who's the Chief Marketing Officer at Elemental Technologies. Hello, Keith. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, now, when we used to talk about encoding and transcoding in this industry, there was an assumption that you needed hardware based encoding to, uh, to really get the high quality. But is that now out of date, do you think? Uh, I think to a certain extent. Over the last decade, there's been an evolution towards software, orig originally for internet delivered video. Uh, more traditional applications were always delivered via hardware-based platform, typically ASICs. And I think with the advent of multi-screen over the last three years, the pace of change has become so rapid and so advanced that it's hard for hardware platforms to keep up. And so sof software, I think, has gained a good amount of um, you know, acceptance in the market. Um, traditionally for multi-screen, but also evolving into other applications as well. Yeah, I mean, are we seeing um, traditional TV start to use software at all? I mean, obviously multi-screen seems to be where this has found its place, but could we see it used for sort of, you know, classic television? I think so. I think in terms of video processing, that's just starting to evolve. In other areas, obviously, it's migrated to software. Um, many IT industries, as you know, has mig have migrated from hardware-based solutions or dedicated um, solutions to software over the course of time. And I think video processing and the video infrastructure market in general is one of the last to adopt a more virtualized and software-based approach, partially because video compression is very complicated and very difficult. The algorithms are just extremely intense, and traditionally that's worked well for ASICs that are dedicated to a particular function. Um, in general, you know, innovation occurred every let's say every decade or maybe every five years, but now we're getting down into every five months. And with a monthly churn, um, you really can't keep up with a hardware-based platform. You have to go to software in order to keep up with the pace of change. You never know when a new device is gonna come out or someone like Adobe or Apple is gonna make a change to their specification. Um, you know, the world of, of standards is important, um, absolutely very important, particularly at the compression level. Um, but when you look at the world today, there are a lot of large companies that are vying to become the de facto standard, and that means they're pushing the envelope uh, partially out of the intent to help the industry, help it monetize, help it achieve ubiquity in terms of coverage, make it easy for users to get the experience that they want. But they also have their own mo motives, right? Just as traditional uh, industry players wanted to become de facto standards, so do these players. And really to take advantage of that, software-based platforms are necessary in order to keep up with the pace of change. Okay, and is it inevitable that software means separation from the hardware and virtualization, or you know, is it, is it a hybrid approach? I, I think for now it's a hybrid approach. Whether or not it's inevitable, I think will play out over the next decade. Um, but you know, for Elemental as a, as a video provider and as a video infrastructure provider, we're essentially a, uh, a software-based solution. We run on hardware, we run on general purpose hardware. Uh, many people in the industry view us as a hardware-based platform because we productized in that way. Uh, we productized initially as an appliance, but in, in reality, it's a completely a software play. Uh, we've written the entire stack from the codec on up to the MUX and all the way uh, to the final product that we have uh, based on software running on off-the-shelf hardware. And so I think the ability to uh, port across different architectures, the ability to have uh, virtualized machines, whether they be in a private uh, cloud environment or a public cloud environment, will be the way of the future. Uh, many customers are taking advantage of this in a, in a hybrid way. Uh, we have a number of customers that have you know, gone to our uh, cloud-based platform, Elemental Cloud, as a, as a pure cloud-based offering. Uh, but many of them use it just for spikes in demand when they have unforeseen inf instances or uh, we have customers like the BBC that actually have spikes in demand at certain hours of the day and they don't need to have all the infrastructure to be able to have that um, available to them 24-7. They have 23 hours of the day where they have a certain baseline of, of processing and then it spikes um, during an hour or two of the day and so the cloud is perfect for that in that type of scenario. So is that the typical model right now that people still invest in the sort of the average requirement in terms of capex and transcoding or video processing on-premise and then they just take the extra into the cloud? I think so. For those that are, are getting their feet wet with the cloud, um, more the let's say traditional um, businesses that have a lot of business in place, they will use it in that way. Maybe more innovative type of companies or companies that are just more upstart, they don't want to put in the capex spend and so they'll use a pure cloud uh, scenario because that eliminates the need for the capital expense. They can operationalize everything and it, it's a little bit less risk for them. You know, people put together business plans but they don't know exactly what's going to happen. In the case of the larger players, they may also have 
projects that they want to trial on or do development on to bring new technologies to market. It doesn't make sense to put in the infrastructure to do all that when you don't know if it's going to take off or not. And so it's a way to help them innovate very quickly um, with a lot less risk. And so it can foster innovation for, the, for the, their businesses in that way as well. Okay. I mean, you mentioned the BBC a moment ago. I mean, what exactly do you do for them? Yeah, so the BBC announced, um, we, we've been well known to have a relationship with the BBC in terms of the work we did with the Olympics in 2012. Um, they announced recently, just in the fall actually, their migration to their next generation video infrastructure. It's called Video Factory. Um, that's more an internal name, but they've used it publicly as well. Um, they've published it on their blog in October. And in November they disclosed actually that Elemental is the underlying video processing engine for that. And it's entirely a cloud-based solution um, in terms of how they've implemented it, but it also has ground resources as well. Um, in our case, Elemental Cloud is uh, on the infrastructure with, with Amazon, with AWS. And so we have a platform in place that the BBC basically writes to our APIs to be able to utilize all the capacity they can need. And in this case, a lot of their um, work is converting all the renditions of content that they do in the, in the newsroom, for instance, to uh, customize it for different geographies, to get it out to iPlayer, um, you know, so that it's not just the one feed, but that it's customized on a regional basis. I think they spiked to some, something on the order of 20 different uh, regions where they customize the content uh, for, those, uh, for those shows that they're, they're producing. Um, they do about, I think, 500 unique hours a week of content uh, on that platform. And as you know, over the course of the last year or so, they did about three billion um, streams to the iPlayer, and that was enabled in part by Video Factory. Wow, that's interesting. So, do you think that more um, more operators and channel owners will go down that route towards sort of more cloud-based? I content? think so. I, you know, the BBC's charter is is par partially to help the industry move forward, right? And so that's why they disclose this information. And I think. I think they are very much a leader uh, globally, and that's why they start to announce um, how they do this. Um, I do think that we're seeing uptake. We have a number of customers that are that are going forth and doing this both in the studio market, in the programmer market, uh, in the broadcast market, and the pay TV side. Um, and so I think the, the evolution towards a more flexible overall architecture where you can have ground-based resources for where it makes sense, you can have cloud-based resources, whether public or private, when that makes sense, I think that's a trend of the future, absolutely. Okay, and just in a few words, what, what is the main challenge if you start introducing cloud and maybe with premise as well, so perhaps it's hybrid, I mean, what do you as a, as a transcoding company have to do ex exactly right? The challenge in the past, before we developed our platform and what we saw in the market, was that everything was disjoint. There was either ground-based players or cloud-based players in terms of providers, and they were very separate. Um, what we've done is that we've unified the entire platform. And so if our customers have purchased ground resources and they've written to our APIs, which is typically the case, they can utilize those same APIs in the cloud. It unifies the whole scenario. The other thing is to add the intelligence layer, which makes it a true platform, to be able to make decisions on, you know, do you want to have limitations on the amount of cloud resources? There's quite a, quite a bit out there. Um, frankly, we could spin up more, more than the total instances that we've placed on the ground in about an hour in the cloud, and, and doing that would be a lot of cost. And so you want to have those gates and limitations on it and have that intelligence behind it. You know, so we give the customers the tools to be able to do that. We, on the file side, we allow for um, queue length to decide whether or not you go to the cloud or priority um, levels. It can be all types of intelligence behind that. And that's, those are some of the challenges that, that we've overcome as well as obviously the security side of things. So, you know, you'd be surprised. Um, I think folks were surprised that the BBC is doing this. Uh, people are very protective of their content, but, you know, Amazon has gone through MPAA ratings um, with the studios in, in, uh, in Hollywood to be able to have the security clearance to be able to do things like this. Um, we're seeing studios actually use cloud resources um, today with, with our Elemental Cloud. And so, you know, I think a lot of those barriers that were perception um, at one point and, and probably real, um, you know, three or four years ago, are, are now really going away. Okay, well, I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about this. So um, thank you very much for coming and telling us about it, and uh, great talking to you. Thanks, John.